Let's practice finding surface area. Serena is making a model of one of the Egyptian pyramids. The square base has sides that are all four and two tenths inch. Each of the triangular faces has a base of four and two tenths inch and a height of three and six tenths inch. How much paper would it take to cover the entire pyramid? So in the square base pyramid, you're going to notice that you have a square as your base, hence the term square base pyramid. And then you have four triangles that are going to come up to one point, which is why you have that pyramid. So in order to find the area, I'm going to separate it into multiple pieces. So I have my square first. Notice that I only have one dimension for my square listed, which is 4.2 centimeters. Remember, if it's a square, you don't have to have this dimension listed as well, because it's a square, it's going to be 4.2 as well. So if it's not listed, you're going to assume that it's going to still be the same. So to find the area, it's length times width, 4.2 times 4.2. And I'm going to do this over here. I'm going to show my work. For those of you that don't like to show your work, you're going to need to get used to it. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, placeholder 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 plus 0 is 4, 8 plus 8 is 16, 6 plus 1 is 7, 1 plus 0 is 1, 2 decimal places, 1, 2 decimal places. So my base has an area of 17.64 centimeters squared. Now, that's for this shape. I need to find for all four triangles. Notice as well, since it's a square, this triangle and this triangle and this triangle and this triangle are all going to be the same. So notice that I said my four sides are my four triangles. I only have to find for one and then I can multiply by four. So area of a triangle is base, this is my base, 4.2, remember that's the same here, 4.2 times my height, that's this dash line, they're all the same, 3.6 divided by 2, that will be for one triangle. Again, I'm going to show my work, 4.2 times 3.6, 6 times 2 is 12, Carry the 1, 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Placeholder, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12. Add these together, 2 plus 0 is 2, 6 plus 5 is 11, four, 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 1 plus 0 is 1. Two decimal places, two decimal places. So 15.12 is not yet complete because I still have to divide by two. Remember that, that usually is a step that most people forget to do. Math teachers and kids alone. So 15.12 divided by two, two goes into one zero times, two goes into 15 seven times, 15 minus 14 is one, two goes into 11 five times, Two goes into 12 six times. My decimal goes straight up because I have no decimal on the outside. So one triangle has an area of 7.56 centimeters squared. But remember, I have four of those sides. So I have to multiply that by four. Six times four is 24. Five times four is 20 plus two is 22. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 2 is 30. Two decimal places, two decimal places. So 30 and 2400 centimeters squared are my, re or my um, triangles. But that's not my answer because now I have to take, remember, I just found for this one and this one and this one and this one. So now I have to take that 30 and 24 hundredths and add it to what I got for my base, which is 17 and 64 hundredths. This is it, my last step. That's a lot of work. Four plus four is eight. Six plus two is eight. 
7 plus 0 is 7. 3 plus 1 is 4. My grand total area, how much will be needed, is 47 and 8,800 centimeters squared. Remember, it's still squared because it's still area. Area is still squared. That, all that work, all the way through it, is for that little shape right there. But once you get into the habit of knowing I've got to decompose the shape, that's all I'm doing is decomposing that shape, I can find any area of any of these shapes that I'm going to be given. Frank got a gift for his sister and put it in a shoebox. Now he wants to wrap it with wrapping paper. If the length of the shoebox measures 10 inches, the width measures 6 inches, and the height measures 4 inches, how much wrapping paper does he need to cover the shoebox? So my rectangular prism that I have drawn here, you'll notice that not all of the sides are the same. And not all of the sides are the same because I have three sets of dimensions and it's a shoe box. So it's not going to be a cube. Um, it's not gonna be a, an elongated cube very quickly either. So I'm going to look at finding for multiple areas. Notice that this shape and this shape are going to be the same. So over here, you'll see that I have two sets of three sides. So I'm going to say that is going to be A. So those two sides. And I'm going to put over here in parentheses two of them to remember. I'm also going to look at the fact that this side and this side are the same. So I'm going to call those sides B. Remember, there's two of them. And then the last this side and this side are going to be the same. Those are sides C, and there's two of them. Remember, I have two over here. There's a reason for it. So um, to kind of keep this in mind, the best way to go about this is to make sure that you're using your dimensions as lengths, widths, and heights. So this section, I have a length of 10 and a width of 6. Also notice that I'm using color. Color, again, is a great way to help you. And I have two of them, so we're not gonna forget that. Then I have this shape, that's shape C, which is a four by six. A four by six, that's the shape and the shape. I know it's six because this side will match up with this side right here. See how this will just match right up there? And if I fold it, because this flat pattern will fold up into a three-dimensional shape, they would match up with each other. My last one is going to be this small piece that's right here. Notice that this is symmetrical with this, right? They're parallel to each other. So this is four and this is four. So I'm going to have a 4 by this length. It's the same as this length, which is a 10, a 4 by 10. If you notice, when I did this, each time, if it works out, I'm going to use my length twice. I'm going to use my width twice. And I'm going to use my height twice. Two blues, two oranges, and two pinks. In doing so, I know that I've used all of my dimensions. Now, the last thing I need to do is multiply. So 10 times 6 is 60. Remember, there's two of them. Times 2 is 120. So that goes for those two shapes. Now I have a 4 by 10, which is 40. Times 2 is 80. That's for those two shapes. And then a 4 by 6, which is 24. Times 2, which is 48 which are those two. Now all I have to do since I'm finding the area is add them all together. Remember, I decomposed it. Now I'm composing it. 8 plus 0 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14. 1 plus 1 is 2. So all of my area here is going to be 240. I believe it was inches squared. I'm pretty sure it was inches. It's okay if it wasn't. If it wasn't, I'm sure you'll be able to tell me. 
it wasn't inches, it was centimeters or it was feet. That's one thing you got to make sure you write down your units. And I didn't do that, but 248 units squared. Remember it's still squared. Why? I still have three dimensions. Yes, but you're not filling it. You're not finding for the volume. You're wrapping it. You're going around it. When you go around something, on the outside of it, you're finding for multiple areas. Multiple areas are still going to be units squared. So 248 inches or units squared. Thank you.